What kind of underwear are you wearing? That's let's not do that. That was weird. No, that, that was weird. I don't know. <laughs> What's up, undergarment fans? Thank you for coming back for another video. I am your host, Johnny Gaz. Today we are answering the most important question of our lifetime, of human existence. We are answering the question: boxers or briefs? This, of course, is a heated debate, one of the most heated debates of all time. Some people are very staunch on their support of being boxer people. Some people will say nothing but give me them whitey tighties. Ultimately, it's personal preference. But today, we're going to go through both options. We're going to talk about the history of undergarments, and we're going to find out what is right for you. Why don't we start by giving a special shout out to what I deem to be the most important undergarment of all time. It is the undergarment that we start our lives with and the undergarment that we end our lives with. We cannot go deeper into this segment or this video without giving a special shout out to the diaper. Thank you, diaper. You've been there for me during many points of my life, some I wish not to talk about here today, and you will be there again in my future. Thank you, diapers. The truth is, my personal history has a wide variety of boxers, briefs, and everywhere in between. We'll talk about that during the video and at the end where I give you my personal opinion and we'll talk about what's right for you. Before we dive into the topic of the day, boxers or briefs, we have to go over the history of undergarments. We have to understand where we started to figure out where we're going to finish. Before there was anything else, prehistoric man figured out that they had to protect their goods. You gotta cherish the jewels. Ultimately, they would use coverings such as leather and other material to protect themselves from the elements, keep themselves warm, and keep the twig and berries safe. As far back as 4400 to 3000 BC, the loincloth comes into play. Now, loincloths are a very simple piece of fabric that can be wrapped around underneath and around the waist, either tied or secured by some sort of belt mechanism. Ultimately, a loincloth protects your special parts and it gave folks the sense of dignity. Loincloths could be made from various materials and it could vary depending on climate, cultural significance, sometimes it came down to wealth status. For instance, in Greek and Roman times, silks and fine, fine material such as that would be used for undergarments. Those of the more wealthier class would be able to afford that sort of undergarment. Folks that couldn't afford that sort of undergarment used material like wool. Ouch. Oof. As we get into the Middle Ages, a form of pants called braids are developed that tie at the waist and either above or below the knee. Again, a protective undergarment that would go under protective material such as armor or other pants of any kind. Now, braids, again, depending on status, climate, cultural significance, could be worn as either outer garments and as we move forward, more so as undergarments. Those braids developed into the more modern trousers, breeches, or breeches, as we call them. Knickers were also used as a term as we move forward in our history. Now, these braids, these pantaloons, let's say, would have a flap or a cod piece at the front end for your man and friends to hang out in. They were also used as a status symbol or a storage unit, believe it or not. Can't imagine that being very sanitary, but again, cod pieces. Hmm, look it up. As we enter the Industrial Revolution and mass production becomes more prominent, the union suit becomes more popular. This is a one-piece garment that is buttoned up the front. There is a button flap in the back, a very famous button flap in the back for toileted use to be able to relieve yourself. The union suit over time evolved into long johns, which were actually named after John L. Sullivan, who was a famous bare knuckle boxer. 
And as we get into the 1800s, we see the development of the jock strap or the jock or Jill for you ladies out there. The jock strap was actually invented in 1874 by C.F. Bennett with the Sharp and Smith Company out of Chicago. The jock strap not only used for support of the upfront bits, but that also developed into more of an athletic or sport type use as we moved into the 20th century. So there is a very brief history of undergarments. Now let's dive into the topic of the day. Let's talk about both boxers and briefs. Different variations of the pantaloons, the breeches, breeches we just talked about carried us through the 20th century. And the modern version of undergarments then started to come into play. So let's start with boxers. Boxers were actually invented in 1925 by Jacob Gollum. He was the founder of the boxing company Everlast. They were developing the newly elastic waistbands. And for boxers wanted to have a garment that was a little bit more movable, a little bit more athletic in its use. So hence the term boxers. Now, boxers are going to be the loosest of the loose option that we have in modern undergarments. They're going to be the closest that we have to your all natural movement and feel. They are typically longer cut. They're going to fit over the front of the leg. And at the front, you're going to find a button or a slit, obviously for ease of access for those relief sessions. Ah, that's nice. Boxers in general are most popular with young men or boys. A younger generation of folks fell into boxers, especially in my generation. We're talking the 90s and early 2000s. However, as we mentioned when we started the segment, they were invented in 1925 and worn in the right context with the right fit and style. They are also considered sophisticated and a great look in a formal setting. Now we talked about the pros associated with boxers. They're a lot more movable, much more airflow when you're wearing a boxer. Okay. They're really versatile in a sense of obviously you're going to wear them as that protective layer between you and your pants, but you could also wear them in, let's say a nighttime setting. I, you know, there's a lot of ways both male and females can wear boxers. So they are very versatile, but there are some cons associated to boxers as well. Again, with all that natural movement, you know, you have a lot of freedom down there with that movement, those twig and berries, they can move a little bit too much. That can be a little uncomfortable. Things can shift and scrunch mold and mend and all those other words that you don't really want to associate down there because you have so much freedom. And what I think is the biggest con associated to wearing boxers, this is my personal opinion, but the bunching up, the scrunching, the material itself, you try to put them on underneath a pair of pants, you wear them around a little too much, you're active in them, they're going to bunch up. You know, if you're wearing a, a set of dress pants, though that bunching can show and that is not, that's not a good look. You know, you're readjusting constantly wearing boxers. And they can sometimes be unsightly. Overall, I think boxers can be a great option. Again, you got a lot of freedom with boxers. They're very versatile. My personal history, I have worn boxers before. I've gone through the gambit. I wore boxers back in the 90s, in the early 2000s. I wore them with my oversized Jinko jeans. It was the coolest thing in the world to allow your boxers to hang out of your jeans as part of your outfit. So I'm very familiar. You know, we've went over both pros and cons, and it is certainly a great option. Go team boxers. And out of the blue corner, standing at really small, really tight. Give it up for briefs. All right, let's talk about briefs. A little smaller, a little tighter come in a lot of different varieties. Let's go over them. Briefs were actually invented in 1935 by the Coopers Incorporated. They're out of Chicago, Illinois as well. And a man named Arthur Niebler came up with a more comfortable form-fitting undergarment known as briefs. They were a more modest version of the jock straps that we talked about earlier, but you also get the backside coverage that you don't get with your jock or your jill. So certainly much more modest and covering there. 
Briefs are cut off at the top of the leg, and those cuts come in a variety of styles, which you see here. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Briefs have what's called a Y front, so you can, again, ease of access for those relief sessions. Got to have them. Now, briefs, also known as whitey tighties or slips, are more popular with the older generation. You could make the argument, again, this was something new back in 1935. It's something that the older generation is comfortable with. Again, I have personally worn them as I was a younger child and throughout the needs of my life. So it can apply to everyone and anyone, but in general, they are more popular with the older generation. However, if you were to look at advertising, marketing ads, you could certainly say that briefs are the sexier version of the undergarments that we've looked at today. Same thing with briefs. We mentioned the pros here. A lot more form-fitting, a little more comfortable if you get that right fit and size. There's a lot of benefits to wearing briefs. However, there are cons to wearing briefs. Let's go through those right now. With more skin-on-skin -skin contact, unfortunately, there is an opportunity for more chafing, irritation, the ingrown hair. An improperly fit brief is maybe the worst form of undergarment you can have. Personal experience, I'm sure a lot of you would support that. Man, woman, whatever. You do not want an ill-fitting brief. It is uncomfortable. Now let's talk about it. The negative effects on the sperm count, right? That's the biggest reason you can't wear briefs. Ah. You know, when I was a teenager, when I was in middle school, making the transition from briefs mm -hmm. to boxers, because that was the cool thing. One of the reasons people would use to not wear briefs is this myth, at least we thought it was a myth at the time, that if you wear tidy whities your sperm count decreases. You can't have kids. You're not going to be able to have kids if you wear whitey tighties. Well, I did a little research and come to find out that is actually true to a certain extent. The T.H. Chan Harvard School of Public Health posted in August 8th, 2019, a study that says boxers or briefs, loose fitting underwear may benefit sperm production. Now we won't go into this in detail. I will post this article in the description of this video so you can review those statistics yourself. Ultimately, it did determine that the group of men wearing a more form fitting type of underwear like a brief had a lower sperm count than the men that typically wore a looser fitting boxer style undergarment. Now, there were several extenuating circumstances to this study. And again, it ultimately comes down to a personal situation. This is more of a quantity versus quality argument. And as you dive into it further, you come to understand that in most, what we'll say normal situations, a human with a normal sperm production isn't going to have a problem if they wear briefs their entire life because they will have a quality of sperm that will be able to reproduce when necessary. It is in those situations where a man already has a low sperm count or a low quality sperm where a doctor or medical professional would recommend switching from, let's say, briefs to boxers. That is very rare. Of course, we give all sympathy to those, to those folks that want to reproduce and can or need to make the change all respect there but in general and the overarching theme here is that briefs do not cause you to not have children and are certainly it certainly shouldn't be used as a reason to make fun of a teen child i'm coming after you barry all right so let's go over some other options that you have of course we talked about boxers we talked about briefs what if you don't like either? What if you want a different option? Well, here's my recommendation. The old boxer brief. If you like the support of briefs, but the coverage of boxers, you can go with the now so popular boxer briefs. This was made famous by Kelvin Klein and a lot of advertisements in the 90s. Again, it was kind of 
advertises that in between undergarment that kind of works for both purposes. Boxer briefs come in different extensions down the leg, but ultimately, as long as it is past that hip joint, it is considered a boxer brief. Now, as it may be the best of both worlds, you still have the concern of the chafing, the irritation, if it is an improper fit. And the lower sperm count study still comes into play here as they do fit relatively the same as a brief. And to all my humans out there seeking to be sought by other women, they are overwhelmingly in favor of the boxer brief. I researched this in over study upon study upon study. Women in general find the boxer brief to be the sexiest option of undergarment in the current modern day society we live in now. What if you don't like anything? I'm uncomfortable. It's bunching up. I don't like the tight fitting. I don't want to be loose. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Is commando an option? Now, history would support that commando at least is an option. It could be an option. It is definitely your most breathable option. But it might be not so great. You have absolutely zero support if you go commando. You have no protection. You have no layer between your goody, goody, goodies and your panty, panty, panties. And I don't even know that I need to say it. I don't know that I want to say it, but I'm going to say it. Zippers. So boxers or briefs, what do we go with? What do you do? A little history for Johnny Gaz. Again, I grew up with the diaper. And I'm going to go out in the diaper. But in my young age, I was definitely a whitey tidy kid. That's what my parents assigned me. That's all I knew. That's what it was. It was whitey tidies all day, every day. As I got into middle school, again, that became kind of the out thing. You don't wear whitey tidies anymore. You don't say that. You don't mention that. So it was boxers for a few years. As I became involved in more athletic competition type sports in high school, I discovered the boxer brief. To me, it seemed like the best of both worlds, as we talked about earlier. It was a perfect go-between for an everyday use and then could then be used in that athletic setting as well. So you didn't have to bring multiple different pairs of underwear with you. So that was me. And that's really been what I've used from that point forward to this point in my life. I am a boxer brief supporter through and through. So in my opinion, the best option is actually a third option, and it is the boxer brief. Now, it always comes down to personal preference, your history, your environment. You certainly could use a multitude of options. I've actually done that in my life. I've had situations where boxers come into play. I've used them as just a nighttime type undergarment or just wearing them in general just to hang out loose. And we'll talk about that one so much. But it's always about your personal preference, your lifestyle, what you're doing in the moment, it, what is works for you. And I'm hoping that today I've highlighted all of the options and just allowed you to think about it just one more time. I know we've looked at this over and over and over again. You've probably seen videos like this before, but I hope that I've given you just a little bit more insight, just a little bit of that Johnny Gas spin so that you can make the best decision for yourself. I want to show big shout outs to underwearexpert.com, pantsandsocks.com, as well as the hsph.harvard.edu website. A lot of the research comes right from there. I will link all three in the description of the video. Thank you so much for coming along. Again, I'm your host, Johnny Gaz. I appreciate your time on this. I hope that you're able to make the best decision for you as far as boxers, briefs, or everywhere in between. Thank you for coming along for this video. Definitely hit that like button if you liked what you saw today and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos on Johnny Gas Sports. Thank you guys so much and you have an awesome day.